So this is going to be a little different <clears throat> webinar. Normally I do on topics very specific to project management and agile and leadership. <clears throat> but this is a very relevant topic for all project managers and professionals who are uh, mostly working from home and uh, based on where you are, uh, it could be you may be going to office uh, or you may not be going to office. So it just depends uh, on the local situation that you have uh, because of uh, COVID-19. Okay, so let's- Are you uh, recording this, uh, NK? Yes, uh, yes, if you have registered it, you will get the recording and uh, you, you, this normally all the webinars that we do, we put it on our YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube and search for Refine and channel, you will see all our webinar recording, not only this one, this will be, <clears throat> we'll be recording it and we'll be putting it on our YouTube channel in next couple of days. Yes, definitely yeah. we're going to do that. And the reason I ask is this is not just important for our our kind of uh, project management community. I think this subject is impacting a lot of other. Yes, uh, absolutely, absolutely. As well. Yes, yes, Thank absolutely, you. absolutely. Uh, and that was one of the purpose to at least start with the project management community, right? And exactly. and then then uh, if others can use it, that's uh, that's great. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Okay. <clears throat> All right. All right. So let's uh, let's move on. Uh, so agenda for this webinar, we'll talk a little bit about Refinam and then we'll set context for this. This is a little different context than project management. So we'll set little context for this. Um, and then we will talk about our main topic. And then I'm going to present a five point strategy uh, that I have been experimenting with and I have found it to be very useful. So this is my own personal experience by taking guidance and uh, you know learning from others um, and then <clears throat> developing a kind of a daily plan we're all project managers right we would like to have some kind of a structure right so so we'll share you some kind of a daily plan and i will share you my own plan that i uh, i am uh, executing on a daily basis and we'll have a q and a at the end okay so this is uh, our virtual lunch and learn that we do every month, first Wednesday of the month. And the purpose is to help you learn as you eat your lunch. But now since um, you know there are people from all over the places, uh, so it may not be lunch time for you, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, and we'll cover a variety of topics normally in our, uh, our webinars. And uh, this, is, this slide is a little bit a summary about myself. Um, I'm a CEO consultant uh, with Refinem. I started this company in December, 2011. We do project management consulting and training, agile coaching. And in last eight years, I have developed some product products that uh, you can use. Most of them are uh, licensed version or, or the subscription version uh, that, uh, that you can use. Uh, the core purpose why I started this organization or my own company Refinem is to help other organizations turn their project management capability into a competitive advantage. You know, completing projects is like executing the strategy. So if you are able to finish your projects in time, you, are, you execute your strategy in a better way, faster, sooner, and you know, uh, at, uh, within cost and all that. So those companies who have higher maturity of delivering projects or their projects are delivered with uh, with predict predictability, they do better. So that's the, that's the key there. So by helping teams or organization deliver their projects, I'm helping them to remain competitive. Okay, so what's new at Refinem? So as I was talking about, we have free webinars that we do uh, every month and every quarter, I deliver the webinar on projectmanagement.com to get a wider wider audience. Uh, so uh, the last one we did in June, uh, and it was about career choices for PMPs. And that's a, that was very well received. And uh, you, you can go to projectmanagement.com and you can still see the recording there. They, they keep the recording. So, but on 1st July, which is the next one, we are going to talk about a roadmap for project managers to transition to agile. 
many of project managers would like to do that and you know they aspire to do that but they don't know how to do that so i'm going to talk about that in my next webinar on july 1 and then um, on august 5 i'm going to talk about maturity assessment for agile teams uh, and that will be on projectmanagement.com and then you have uh, different products the much bigger list than you saw on my on my bio before a uh, lot of trainings uh, there is simulator there uh, there is agility assessment tool uh, which you may be interested with and this is a toolkit that i have developed for project managers essential gear for project managers all my consulting assignment and in all my training as engagement i use this toolkit and i have found it to be very useful and my instructors who have seen this and used it they have also find it to be very very useful okay so let's get uh, into the context now this time we are going to do it in a little different manner so what i'm going to do is going to ask you to go to this site we use your phone or tablet or whatever uh, smart thing you have in your hand right <laughs> So you, where you can surf the internet. So go to menti.com and enter this code. There will be a question there. So I would like you to answer this question. And there are, you can do two, right? Um, so what are your two biggest worries due to COVID-19? So when you, when you go to menti.com and use that code to get into the application, you will see the two little boxes appear um, uh, below the question. So uh, I would like, is everybody able to go there? Could, could you bring up the uh, uh, code number again? Yeah, please? it's here, right here. You see on my screen? Oh, yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah, it's right here. It's right here. Okay, so somebody has already started. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, 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 very good. I see four people have already put their uh, jobs, health. Health seems to be the, the, the front runner. Health, economy, uh, yeah. Income security, returning back to office. Uh, health and economy are the two biggest worries. Uh, Economy is the biggest worry now. Um, some more. I have 16 people who have uh, isolation. Uh, yeah, all of us are staying uh, home and just depends upon where you are. Some places the, uh, the things are opening, so there may be a little less isolation. Uh, but, uh, but some places there are, uh, there are still a lot of restrictions. So it just depends upon uh, which country, which state, which area you are, uh, and highly contagious level job impact for millennial. Yeah, uh, I, I know a lot of students who are coming out of uh, college, get, graduated, and uh, trying to, uh, you know, struggling to find jobs. Yeah, my family, somebody says, yeah. So there are a lot of these, a lot of these worries, and the, the two that you see in the center are health and economy. And that is, that is uh, I'm glad that it came up from your, your, your participation over here, that these are the two, health and economy. Where, yes, health and economy, very good. Very good, and in this, this webinar, we are going to talk about one of those, right? <laughs> We're going to talk about one of those, the health part, you know, we're going to talk about that. Okay, so my next question here is, um, how these are important impacting your day-to-day -day life. So these were the worries that you had, you know. So how these are impacting you. So, so let's talk about that part. And there is a sliding scale that you can use, right? Yeah, good. Very good, yeah. So there are 17 of you who are, 
who are participating there are the five or six who are not participating do you have a problem in getting into menti.com or maybe you don't want to participate okay okay so um i feel stressed and anxious yeah that's the that is very common that's very common uh, and it has started impacting my behavior negatively uh, so the kind of behavior that you may see is that you know you become irritated and easily irritable kind of thing uh, you may start uh, getting angry and uh, you know all those kind of things that that's the kind of behavior and i strongly believe that i need help so there are some people who need help there are a lot of you who are managing it uh, which is which is great which is great so uh, health economy and that is getting feeling stressed and anxious okay so what are you doing to manage it so there are three options you can do one two or all three so what are you doing to manage it NK, what does that mean? You want us to type some answer, or yeah, yeah. If you go, are you at menti. dot com? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are three three boxes there, right? Do you see three boxes? Yeah. Be occupied, sleep, exercise. Yeah, exercise is uh, reaching out elect electronical. Okay, you mean uh, have a routine? Yeah, very good. exercise 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 yeah family wine okay <laughs> several of you uh, are uh, talking about that you know <laughs> uh, yeah 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 so family exercise i think yeah yeah okay okay very good very good so so for context setting um, one more one more thing so what are your expectations from this webinar what do you want to get out ideas okay very good understand we are not alone yeah new coping tools some new ideas so ideas how others are coping have a dialogue with others ideas 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 how best to manage stress resulting from covid-19 learn from others daily plan okay very good is there anything below oh yeah uh, ideas ways to manage stress insight ideas okay very good so basically ideas how to manage stress what others are doing things like that yeah yeah okay okay all right so let's go back to the powerpoint here so that's a good context setting so i just want to make sure where you are where from you're coming and what you're thinking and what you want to get out of this webinar very good so uh so it's staying emotionally and mentally healthy so what's happening that uh, we all know it, we we learned it now how to keep ourselves physically healthy right uh, you know uh, social distancing washing hands frequently eating healthy and all those kind of things right and all of us are practicing that as well and yeah, as we learn we know how to take care of that um, and uh, but you know what uh what we are doing for our emotional and mental health right we we have been staying inside for a long period of time you know months in the, so you can go out of course in some some places countries and uh, other places you will not be able to even go out so staying in in your home some 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 people have larger homes so they can just walk around go down but some are living in apartments uh that little space is there so uh so we are staying staying home we're staying inside most of the time like i myself with my family 
we are staying in this uh, apartment. We moved to North Carolina last year and we're building our home. Uh, but that home is not yet ready. <laughs> so we are, we are staying in the apartment. Uh, uh, so we may we do go out for walk in the morning, in the evening, but most of the time we're staying home. So what's happening because of that? Uh, one part is uh, uh, the, our environment is getting cleaner, right? We see less pollution and the, uh, the rivers are getting cleaner. The things are getting cleaner. So that's, that's a good thing, right? But at the same time, our emotional environment is getting polluted. So when I talk about emotional environment, what does that mean? That means that um, we hear about number of cases growing, uh, deaths happening, people in terrible state, and we hear this, we hear this all along, we hear it everywhere, right? You switch on the TV, it's there, you go to social media, it's there, you talk to somebody, it's there. So it's all that kind of uh, environment. And because of that, what happens is that you have uncertainty, right? The, the fear or the, the, what you're scared of is it increases uh, the kind of uh, you know, uncertainty. What's going to happen? You know, where the economy is going to do? Will I have a job? And things like that. So uncertainty, fear, right? Uh, anxiety, stress. People are not able to sleep because of that, those kind of thing. And it feeds to, you know, to the, to the physical health too. So because of all of this, this, so these are the, this is how the, our emotional environment, because of these things is getting polluted. So it's, so that's how why it's get polluted. So, uh, so what we need to do, how do we clean our emotional environment? So we can stay emotionally and mentally. And there's not a lot of, a um, lot of um, things that you see about this part. You see a lot of things about the physical health. You see, you, you see on the WhatsApp and all those people sharing their ideas about how to stay physically healthy. But how do you stay emotionally and mentally healthy? That very less talk of that happens. So, and that was one of the purpose for this to come here and talk about it. So uh, I came up with a, with a five point strategy here. The five point strategy and to be very precise. You know. And then of course you can, this is not something that you take literally and do it, but you take it as, as kind of recommendations uh, or advice or whatever you want to, and then tune it for yourself, okay? What works for you in your situation, right? That's what, that's what we all project managers do. We do tailoring of the process, right? Uh, that's what all we agile practitioner do. We tailor it for us, you know, or what will work for. So these are the five, and I'm going to talk about each one of them in detail. Okay. Uh, and, but before we go there, I want to share with you um, how this whole emotional feeling and all those kind of things work in our brain. Okay. So let, let's spend a little bit of time, maybe a couple of minutes on that. So, so when I'm going to talk about this, it will start making sense to you. Okay. So uh, let's say about the thinking and feeling and all those kind of things. Uh, this is normally I teach in my leadership, emotional intelligence class. Um, so uh, thoughts come to mind. You know, something happened, thoughts come to mind. For example, I passed my PMP exam. That gets, that's the thought. You, you come out of the PMP and you pass the exam. This that the thought that came to came to the mind. What that thought does, it triggers a kind of feeling or emotion, right? It uh, that you feel if this was the thought, then you feel happy, right? Happy, excited, you know. Or if there was other kind of thought, like anxiety kind of thought or fear, then it may be a different thought, right? Maybe a sad kind of a thought, you know or scared kind of a thought, right? So, so that, that thought results to these kind of feelings, okay? Uh, and then the feelings um, trigger action, right? If you are happy, your action will be, your feeling, that you are feeling happy, so your action will be different versus if you're feeling angry, right? Your action will be different, right? So, so from those feelings, you know, the action comes, 
And then from action, if you have repeated action, then it becomes a behavior. If you have the same action over a period of time, if your action is of getting angry, then people see it and say, oh, he's an angry person, or he's a quiet person, or he's this kind of person. So this becomes a kind of personality or behavior. So this is how whole thing works in the brain, right? But think about that, how the thoughts come. You would have heard about the food for thought, right? What is that food? And that food is the information that we are absorbing, that we are consuming. What kind of information we are consuming and how much aware we are about that and how do we control what to take and what not to take, right? So it's like you, this, this uh, you know, you have whole world full of thoughts at every moment, the not thought, the information coming to you. You switch on TV, some information came, you talk to somebody, some information came, you went to social media, some information came. And that is the source of thought. Now there's all kinds of information. Now, if you are able to process that information and you can separate that out, then you can have different kinds of thoughts. But if you're not able to filter that properly, then that gets in. And those thoughts become stronger and then those feelings become stronger and those actions come and then behavior comes. Okay. So this is a kind of a chain that you can see. Right? So the, everything starts here. And the thing is that the, it can pass on these things back like your each one of this will feed back to the thoughts. Your feeling can feed back. This can feed back and this can feed back to the, to the thoughts. Right? So you have a chain of thoughts. You know, you, you can sometimes you see that you are going in that spiral kind of a thing. So this, the, the thought is getting, generating feel, you know, feeling, feeling genetic action, action is generating behavior and it's feeding back, you know, feeding back. So that, that keeps coming here to break that circle, right? If you want to do it, uh, do it, have to have a different feeling or different action. So this is, this is a very important part to understand how this happens. Okay, so now coming to strategy number one meditation or yoga and at least for an hour every day every day now what does that do it increases self awareness and when you when you sit down quietly and think what's going on focus on your thoughts then you can see what are the thoughts coming so you create you are able to develop a capability to become more aware. It will help clear up emotional pollution because now what is happening, you know what thoughts are there in your, in your, in your mind and you can start you know, to find, you know, identifying. This is a positive thought, this is a negative thought. You can start identifying that. And then you can start you know, directing uh, yourself to the thoughts that are more important. And, Actually, it's more inward, allows you to think inward, what's happening in you, not happening outside. You know, what is happening inside you? And it also allows you to have more control, right? Allows you to have more control. We'll do a little exercise here in a, in a minute or so. Uh, the best time to do this is early in the morning. The first thing in the morning, you get up, uh, do your bathroom and uh, brush and all that, get fresh. And that's the best time to do it. Worst time to do is nothing. You can do it anytime. Okay, you can do it anytime. You can carve out an hour and think about it. I'm talking about an hour. It is about 4% of your time. We are project managers, right? We, need, we like numbers. <laughs> so it's just 4% of your time. Okay, just 4% of your time. So let's do one thing and we'll get then go to menti.com for, for, a, for a good question. So let's do one thing for two minutes, close your eyes and just observe the thoughts that you get for two minutes. So let's the two minutes start now. Close your eyes and just focus on your thoughts.
two minutes is a long time. I have a timer running. I will let you know. Okay, time is up. So let's, uh, let's answer this question. What ideas came to your mind in last two minutes? <laughs> you good? Anybody else? I have two people, uh, who, three, four, five. Six, eight, ten. Emptiness, yeah. Anybody else? Work? Okay, so, um, so if you see this, um, if you see the lot work, so since we're just a practice for two minutes, so it is natural that your thoughts are still outside you, to-do list, uncertainty about future, family, right? Uh, you know, wider community suffering. So still it is outside you. But when you start practicing, it will bring inside what's going on inside, but that's the starting point. And then you can filter, start filtering the thoughts. What are the good thoughts and what are not the good thoughts? And also you, 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 can, you can focus on your whatever is going in your mind as well as body. Let's say if you're doing a posture in yoga, you can, you can focus on where there you feel stretch, you know, is this part, is this body part I feel stretched? Oh, is this little bit paining? I like this and let me do more. Okay, kind of thing. So, so whether you are doing meditation or you're doing yoga, yoga is also taking different kinds of postures or positions and staying in that position for some time. So when you are in that time, think about what's happening to different parts of the body. So divert that thoughts, those thoughts, what came to your mind, like it's already two minutes, what are different kinds of thoughts came. Now you can start isolating them and you can start focusing on what's happening inside, you know, in, in your body, not outside, because that is what is going to calm you down. Okay. If you keep thinking about outside, then it's not going to calm you down. You need to, need to think about inside and think about what kind of thoughts are coming and then start you know, controlling them. Controlling means uh, this because of the, the information that's coming into you, uh, all kinds of thoughts are generated if you're not aware of it. But if you are aware of it, you can, oh, oh this thought came, just, just take, divert it to something else have another kind of thought, right? So that, that, uh, that it makes you so in control, so much in control, 4% of your time, right? 
four percent of your time early in the morning before you start anything. So that's the first thing that that is my first strategy. Start your day with total relax, relaxed mood and full control. Right, that's how you start your day. Now the second uh, part of the strategy is limit news intake. <laughs> So that you should do now. You should not. You should limit this. No more than thirty minutes a day. And you want to watch news. You want to see what's going around. And and believe me, thirty minutes is more than enough. Things don't change minute by minute, hour by hour, right? And particularly if it if it impacts you, it may not change so much. But you'd like to know what's going on. You'd like to be you know keep yourself updated on what's going on. And for that. no more than 30 minutes you can get updated you can open up any source of information any source of news that you like uh, podcast or radio tv or whatever right and the reason for that is most news is negative right is talking about all negative so that's that's you open up tv open up you know radio social media newspaper whatever that is that news is negative that news creates uh you know the kind of thoughts they are negative thoughts and that results in the feeling that are not good and that results the action that are not good and the behavior okay it contributes to anxiety and stress right so but you want to watch it you want to want to uh, you know stay connected with the world you want to know what's going on Uh, and many time i have seen particularly you know tv channels they repeat the same news over and over and over again there is nothing new like you see a news at let's say 10 am in the morning and see you will see the same thing at 4 pm in the night is most likely has not changed you know so so it's is 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 like that so you you don't lose anything okay the best time to listen to news is in the evenings not in the mornings because it is negative it will contribute to anxiety and stress okay evening after work you know so 5 o'clock 6 o'clock kind of a thing that is the time when you can watch news and get updated a worst time is early in the morning when you get up if you listen to news all these negativity stress and everything happens it will spoil your whole day right or late night before you sleep it we may not let you sleep okay because of anxiety and stress so these are the worst time for listening to news this is the best time limited to 30 minutes a day okay so let's let's go to menti.com and see what what um i would like you to do is how much of news you watch or listen every day <laughs> so let's get a little polling here nine people have voted yeah needing some more yeah anybody else so it is great to see that majority of you watch for less than 30 minute but still some of you are uh, you know watching it for long hours so this is an opportunity for 58% of you to move to this site that will help a lot that will help that's going to help a lot uh, okay let's uh, i'll stop here for for a minute if are there any questions so far i'm not i'm not tracking the 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 uh, the chat box so we'll we'll come back to that later okay all right let's move on so that's that's the strategy number 2 limit news intake okay the strategy number 3 is listen or watch to inspiring or funny content okay inspiring and funny content as much as you want because if you are if you have time and uh, many times uh, you have time right 
So what to do during that time? So instead of watching news and, and all other different kind of things, you just listen to inspiring or funny content as much as you want. There's no, so what does the, this kind of um, content does? It uplifts the mood. It generates positive thoughts, right? So positive thoughts has positive feelings and those positive feelings give, you know, uh, action that you like and others likes, lifts up emotions, uplift emotions. So you create a positive energy around you and the rest of, rest of the people around, you know, get uh, inspired by you. So it's, it's a, this, because what is this content is an intake for the thoughts, right? It's a information, information that is coming to your brain and that's shaping your thoughts and feelings and actions, right? So it comes to you, it comes to you. So uh, best time, anytime. It doesn't matter, it could be whenever you have time. But whenever you listen or watch the content, make sure it is inspiring or funny content. Uh, and worst time, nothing. You can watch it anytime. You can, you can listen to it any time of, of the day. So, uh, so that's a, that's a, that's a third one and that is very helpful. So let's see, let's see, what do you do for this part over here? So what kind of inspiring or funny content do you watch or listen? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Share. Okay. Joke. Funny post on Facebook. TV, comedy, comedy shows, music. A lot of people are already listening to good things. Old sitcoms. Funny post. Motivational comedy shows. Very good. Very good. Okay. Sitcoms wins. Old sitcoms wins. Wins very good cartoons. Okay, Alan Shaw, very good, very good, excellent, excellent. So that's the strategy number three, and a lot of you are doing it. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Uh, yes. And Kay, just uh, before you move to number three, or rather number four, I just wanted to share something with you that I shared on the chat, and that's uh, every morning I share a pun or a joke uh, with my team uh, to start of the day. Um, so that kind of, uh, you know, kicks yeah. off the day on a positive note. And yeah. I'm, I'm known to be the jokester in the team. So um, <laughs> people, people are usually looking forward to this uh, oh, every morning. So, so I thought I'd share that with you. And, and what's your name? Mustafa. Mustafa. Okay, Mustafa. So I'll take it to the, like, in the end, if we have time, keep one joke for the audience. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mustafa. Thank you. Uh, so number four strategy is focus on work. So a lot of us are working from home, right? So focus on work, professional growth. And if you have time, uh, then focus on your professional growth. Okay. Um, so at least eight hours a day, at least. So either work or professional growth. So if you have less work, there's a possibility that you may have less work these days. So utilize this time for professional growth, okay? Uh, and morning to evening, like, like a day in the office, right? Uh, morning, morning to evening. And there are a lot of remote learning opportunities that are available. Lot of, lot of places you can go and learn the things remotely. Uh, so at RefineM, what we have done is that we have made all our trainings virtual now. It takes you know some effort to effort to do that because uh, converting a face-to-face -face, uh, workshop or a training to a remote training require a different kind of way of doing things, right? So uh, so that's uh, so we have done uh, we have done that, uh, and many organizations have done that. So there's a lot of content available for your uh, for your personal growth that you can do learning in your area, whatever is your area, you know, project management, agile or leadership or whatever. So spend some time, get a new certification, right? So uh, if you are a PMP, then what, what you're going to next? That was my 
you know, webinar last month. So how do you grow your career? Okay. So focus, that is very important. Sharpen your skills. Like if you already have a skill, then improve that skill or learn new skills, certifications. Okay. There's a lot of time here. If you have time, then use this as an opportunity. And sometimes it happens in many, uh, many organizations or many companies uh, you know, there is a layoff that happens there during this time. So uh, people don't have work for some time uh, that use that for, of course, you'll be finding jobs, uh, spending time for that and also spend time for professional growth. Okay. Uh, the best time to do is majority of the work day, you know, uh, worst time, none, you can do it anytime, but that's the best time majority of the day uh, that you used to work. Uh, and uh, use that for focusing on your work, remote work uh, or professional growth. So don't lose that because let's say if you have time, uh, don't kill that time, don't, uh, you know, uh, but rather utilize that time because this is, you may not get time when things come back to normal, uh, whenever they are, whenever they will and different parts of the world, they will come back to normal at uh, whenever, whatever time. Okay. So your next uh, part here is, uh, so uh, that was funny part. Okay, sorry about that. So focus on work and professional growth. Uh, now let's see about the social media, right? <laughs> social media, all of us use a lot of social media. So the strategy here is use social media to stay connected. Okay, nowadays we are not meeting, family and friends. Um, sometime within the family, there are family members that are not at one place. Uh, uh, the kids may be in college or, you know, uh, the husband or wife may be working at some other place and all those kind of things. Uh, they may not be able to travel because of travel restrictions in many parts of the world. So social media is a very good way to stay connected with family and friends. Um, you can uh, you can have uh, FaceTime with them. You can have Zoom time with them. Uh, I have seen a uh, lot of uh, people getting into groups and doing some watch party or drink party or dinner party or any guy. Those, those are all great things. You should do that with family or friends because that's how uh, you know you you can you socialize in this situation. Uh, you cannot go and meet friends. You cannot have get togethers with, with people at their homes. Uh, so this is, this is how you can, you can stay connected, but make, make sure no gossip. Now gossip means un, unwanted talk. That's a useless thing, you know? So it's, uh, you know, forwarding messages here and there, uh, without thinking about it, you know, uh, and uh, talking about COVID related topics all the times on social media uh, and, and, and all those kind of things. So, so don't, don't use social media for that. Rather use it for uh, getting connected with families and friends. And uh, the best time to do that is evenings at five to 8 PM kind of a things. That's the best time to do when you are done with your, your kind of work, uh, all day work, you're at the end of your work, then that's the best time to do. Uh, get connected with, uh, with, uh, with your social group. Uh, worst time is mornings. Okay. Mornings is basically for that yoga meditation and all those to be yourself, to be with yourself. Right. The evenings is to go out and socialize. And that's the best. And if you remember when, you know, pre COVID days, that was the time when you will go out maybe uh, in the evenings, meet people uh, in the evenings. So that's the, that's the best time, you know, meet people over dinner or, or have a, uh, over, you know, a cup of coffee or, or whatever. Uh, so, so the same thing. So five to 8 PM and worst time is in the mornings. Uh, so now let's talk about how you are doing the social media part. Uh, in your lives. So <clears throat> what for you social media? Q 
you put it trying yeah facebook is a social media zoom is a social media but i am saying what what for you use that keep up with friends yeah facetime news family yeah yeah i should have clarified that i'm not asking which social media you use okay <laughs> old school phone okay <laughs> okay yeah anybody else entertainment okay okay entertainment i don't know what is days of the year what does that mean social media somebody is using for work watching street food okay no social media okay okay very good very good and let's uh, see uh, how much time you spend on social media each day anybody else so most of you are spending 1 to 2 hours on social media and that's that's all right that's all right yeah some of you are spending uh, less than an hour so some of you are spending 4 to 8 hours here to watch for that you're not slipping into the gossip mode uh, you know so that's uh, that is important to note because if it is more than 2 hours probably Uh, you may be getting into the gossip mode but watch may, maybe you are not because i don't know what you are doing on that in that time maybe you are you are utilizing it uh, for for in in a positive way so if you are doing that that's that's great but if it goes beyond 1 to 2 hours there is a there is a very good chance that it may turn into kind of gossip what i was talking about uh, some uh, not useful conversation and wastage of time kind of a thing okay so let's come back here so that was the 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 last strategy and i wanted to share with you the schedule that i was talking about this is the schedule that i am following on a weekday on weekends it's all you know little bit of this little bit of that like uh, regular days so my weekdays are very structured weekends are not structured weekends you know normally we'll say okay what what we are going to do today so i'll talk to my family my wife my kids so what we are going to do today and then based on that we we discuss we talk and we decide so that's very unstructured right but weekday is very structured is very very structured and uh, normally i follow these timelines maybe sometimes you know you 30 minutes here or there that's not going to kill you but the key part is that how you are starting your mornings how you are maintaining your day and then how you are finishing your day i think that is what is important and this is what is going to help your emotional and mental health so you are not engaging in gossip you are not listening to the news all day you are starting your day in a very relaxed controlled manner right and before you go to bed you are happy you talk to your family and friends uh, you know uh, you have created your plan for the next day so uh, so it's like relaxed kind of thing so you you should be able to able to sleep uh, sleep well okay uh, so in conclusion where there is increased uh, there is increased emotional pollution we talked about that in a, and in addition to staying physically healthy we want to stay emotionally and mentally healthy use your five point strategy to uh, and tune it for yourself 
tune it for yourself and see how it how it fits with your situation your environment and maybe you have sixth one maybe you don't need the fifth one or whatever that is uh, start from here and then iterate uh, like a like a agile team um, so this is my uh, contact information but and you all know it uh, it is there in uh, in other communication so next uh, lunch and learn is roadmap for project managers to transition to agile how they do it it's going to be at uh, 12 pm central time and it should be up and coming up very soon on our website so you can register um, our next uh, certification courses pmp and acp those are two certification courses that are happening in july so if you are looking for a pmp certification or a acp certification register before the early bird so you get uh, discounts uh, one pdu for this course and you can uh, you uh, you will get a copy of these slides uh, in your email if you registered it you will get it and you can get your pdus uh, and this is our training opportunities uh, that are coming up all are remote everything everything is remote okay so we have few minutes left uh, let me go back to the uh let me go back here on the chat and see uh chat there are a lot of things here um okay so i agree with you yeah very insightful emotional really for human i'm just thinking if there are any questions you can ask questions as i'm scanning the chat box if there were any questions does anybody has any question yeah so there is a discussion that they work from home they are working longer hours that is that is right that is right that may be a uh, okay okay so um okay confirming that we registered will receive a pdu so uh, myrana you will not receive it automatically there is a instruction you see the you saw the slide there was an instruction slide and you can go and uh, uh, self report uh, the pdu on the website on yeah. yeah you can do that okay anybody has any questions so we have few minutes so zahir is spending 12 plus hours that's uh, uh, yeah some of some of us are doing that yeah thank you this was really helpful okay yeah nk i think everybody is uh, uh, probably uh, experiencing this but uh, you know the ballooning amount of email and uh, other communications through skype so through teams through um you know chats and thing like that um uh, has really ballooned in this uh, uh in this environment where we are working from home yeah and uh, you know there there are two impacts of this one uh, is that it has increased stress and number two it has increased the amount of time that we actually spend working um i'd like to know the experiences from the people who are uh, attending on whether this reflects in greater productivity like zahir um we are spending much much more time working but i'm not sure if they if if we are being more productive and what we can do to make it more productive and yet uh, still be responsive to our customers to our uh, teams to our uh, supervisors yeah so uh, i just wanted to kind yeah, of yeah who that who, who was you. that that's mustafa okay mustafa. so i think that's an excellent topic um so the productivity part because of all those distractions and all those kind of thing so i would like if the conversation can be in the context of the topic that we have today so the context was the emotional and the emotional and mental health kind of a thing so um so that is a very good topic mustafa maybe i should think about putting together a something on that topic yeah sure and i can team up with you if you want okay all right all right okay.
Uh, Thank you, and you're can... right. Yeah, let's focus on what we have today. I agree. Anybody, anybody want to share uh, anything? Yeah. Hi, NK, I have a question. This is Sujata here. Yeah. Um, sometimes it happens there are some uh, circumstances that you can't put your time into doing the physical needs or the work or the other stuff that you need to do home. But then you are stuck with, uh, you know, the phone at hand, which is like you kind of spend a lot of time on that. And you know you're not doing it right. What is a good way to get away from that? How does, because, you know, the mind knows you're not doing right. But the body says, okay, fine, you need to rest. What else can you do? So how, how, how do you kind of? <laughs> so, so this is a struggle between mind and body, right? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, very interesting question. Yeah, is a struggle between mind and uh, body. So, uh, I have been actually in a different circumstance right now for the last two three months. That's the uh, trouble I'm having. You know, to decide which of the which of the two is more evil. If you exert physically, I have a problem. If I spend more time on the phone, that's another problem. So, how so, do you balance that? So, if I am in your place. Uh -huh. I will take care of my body first. Okay. All right. <laughs> to the social media. <laughs> okay. So I will take care of my body first because if I am able to take care of my body, I can always do work later on. Uh, but okay. if, if, I, if my body is not uh, capable of doing things and if I fall sick physically mm -hmm. and mentally, uh -huh. then I will not be able to take care of that anyway. Okay, got it. Thank you. <laughs> so you kind of justify spending more time on the phone. Okay. <laughs> yes. So I think the first thing is you have to be physically and emotionally healthy. Uh, emotional so part is okay, but it's more yeah. of the physical thing. Yeah. The yeah. emotional so, part is fine. I do the yoga and the uh, you know breathing exercises and all that stuff. Good. But Very good. the physical Very part good. is something that uh, can't Very help. Good. Uh, Very good. Okay, so we are, uh, we are up to uh, uh, for our time, 2 o'clock uh, Eastern. Thank you very much for joining. I hope you got something useful from this uh, webinar and you will use it uh, for, for your benefit.